game week? How, how, how uh, settled do you all feel like you are? And do you feel like uh, you have an idea of who's going to be on that first lineup card? Yeah, you know, we've been practicing a lot, um, doing kind of like a mock series. We had games Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's last weekend, then we had a scrimmage yesterday um, and Tuesday. So, you know, just getting in the routine of things, um, seeing how our bodies react and feel um, throughout the days to make sure we're good on nutrition and everything like that to recover after those games. But um, as far as the lineup card goes, you know, um, that's that's all the way up to, you know, coach says the players make the lineup card, which we do in terms of like, if we play good, we're going to make the lineup card. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's his decision. So we just got to play our best and hope we're in the lineup. What went into your decision to, to come back and not maybe pursue some professional options? Um, so at the end of the season, it came out that I had to have surgery. So I didn't know that um, going up into the draft. Um, so that kind of hindered some, some possibilities. And then on top of that, like this place is special. These fans are special. This this whole city has just embraced me and welcomed me with open arms. So it was kind of an easy decision in terms of, you know, had surgery, didn't really have a lot of possibility with that because I was going to be out for the whole fall anyway. Um, so um, that made the decision a, a little easier. What, uh, what, 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 how close to 100% do you feel like you are? I'm good. I'm ready. 100% ready to go. And how, what level do you think you were at last year? Uh, that's tough to say. I mean, it was hard to to run, to maneuver. Um, at the end of the year, it started getting tough to swing a little bit um, with, you know, the groin area, how you have to twist and things like that. Um, but, I mean, there's no excuses for that. You know, you just got to play through it because everyone has stuff going on. So, Coach mentioned me the other day how, how talented and what the athleticism of this outfield can be even more than last year. Do you look across the board and see the same kind of situation, Bernie? Yeah, I mean, if you place if you replace a guy like Dylan Rock with a guy like Jace Lavillette, like there's not much drop off there. You have a guy that hit 19, and you have a guy coming up as a freshman that is well, he can very easily hit 19 home runs this year. And then on top of that, Rock was a great runner. Jace is a great runner. Um, and then you have Jordan in center. So um, I think a lot of the things, you know, agility wise and speed wise and everything like that were pretty locked down out there. Obviously you had a surgery, but what other changes have you made physically uh, to improve your game in the offseason? Yeah. You about a, a new body type? Yeah. Um, so since I did have surgery, it was pretty easy for me to um, just kind of take a reflection and see what I needed to do to change my body for this upcoming year. And obviously a lot of that was gaining weight. Um, so I gained close to 25 pounds um, of of weight for this year and so I'm just hoping to keep that because as you know it's kind of hard to keep that weight as you play for nine innings every I guess you play nine innings three days in a row and then you turn around play nine innings in two days so um, nutrition is a big thing um, that's what I've kind of honed in on um, eating a lot and eating the right thing so it's not bad weight um, and making me uh, a better player. With that added weight what is done and what do you do specifically to make sure you're still moving the same way speed wise and agility wise yeah it took a while just uh for me to get that speed back just because i wasn't able to run for so long and i and on top of that i did add the weight um so really just take some time um coach mack did a great job with me of um, making sure i was ready for the season you know in terms of strength training and speed training and everything like that so it it took a lot of time uh, i was kind of frustrated when i first came back because i wasn't running the way i was um hoping to but you know just being patient with all that stuff because I realize that I am coming back and you know these are my first you know game like situations since Omaha so it's been an adjustment for me. When did you finally feel 100 percent again? Um, coming back this spring so I was out the whole fall I played in the scrimmage at the end of the fall um, but um, I wasn't totally 100 um, percent coach didn't let me play the field even though I wanted to so I was just a DH in that scrimmage but um, now, coming back from the spring, I was pretty much 100% all winter and coming back, so all good. And after, you know, first season, having such a successful first season under Coach Losh, how have you seen these guys kind of handle the success and the, the expectations that come with this next season? Yeah, you know, people say pressure is a privilege, so um, with all the rankings and everything out, um, you know, we see that, we run toward expectations, we don't run away from it. Um, and so that just helps with 
a lot of the new guys, um, you know, they, a couple guys came up to me in Austin Bose the other day, and they're like, it's crazy that I was watching you guys on TV last year, and now we're here. But, like, I mean, we're, we're people too. We're not as any different than you are. Um, so it's it's been interesting in terms of, you know, getting the new guys acclimated to that. But it's also been interesting because all the older guys that were on last year's team know what it takes. And so we're just trying to preach that to those younger guys and transfer guys that are coming in. How different does the game feel with the new pace of play rules? It feels a lot quicker um, with with how we were as an offense last year. We like to maximize our time on offense. Um, I'm sure it made the games a little long. So, um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of pace of play, um, you know, I was playing outfield the other day, and you know we have those little things that tell us the pitches now. And I was running back to my position. And I wasn't even ready for the pitch just because of the pitch clock. Um, so. That's going to be an adjustment for everyone, um, and so it just the pace of play is going to be a big thing. Um, we have, we've made adjustments to our routines and everything like that, um, so it should be should be good. Speaking of the wristbands, obviously being in right field, you'll always get to see the signs. How much of a change has uh, that been for you, and, and what are your thoughts on being able to see what pitch is coming towards actually from? Yeah, it's good just for anticip anticipation reasoning. Um, you know, you have certain pitches called on there, and you know scouting report wise what the hitters are going to do and things like that and our coaches do a great job of that preparing us um so that it really helps with anticipation but you can't give it away so it's kind of just a little in between so you can't move before the pitch or anything like that because you know what's going on but obviously the other team doesn't so you can't give it away um so that's been a kind of adjustment um and then yeah as far as anticipation goes like you know in a certain count, if you're throwing a fastball, maybe they're more likely to pull that or um, spray it the other way. And then if they're throwing a, you know, a backwards where it's a curveball and a, chain, or a hitter's count, you maybe they're more likely to pull it. So you just got to play a little game inside the game, and um, hopefully it'll put you in the right position. What do you think about the balance of this offense? It's, uh, once again, uh, especially with Targots being able to be a switch hitter, that you're going to be able to have a, a probably an equal number of right-handers and left-handers out on the field. Yeah, it's it's been great um, with Tar being a switch hitter, and then let's see, we lost Dylan Rock, who's a right-handed hitter, replaced him with a left-handed hitter. So um, I think it's going to be honestly the same, just because we it doesn't matter if you throw up a lefty or a righty up there, um, we're going to have competitive at bats either way. Um, and one through nine, this lineup's going to be a a reckoning for other people to face. Um, so we're really excited to display what we can do this year. What are you anticipating from a home field advantage standpoint this opening weekend, opening day, uh, just, you know, obviously coming off the summer that y'all had in Omaha? Yeah, coming off of last season, um, you know, the fans and, you know, everyone around this city really is was a big part of it. Um, it's not just the fans in this ballpark. It was the fans you would go out to dinner and see and they congratulate you and things like that. So it's just... The atmosphere here and in this city and in College Station is great, um, and we're ready to play in front of the best fans in the world. You talked about Jace a little bit ago, just from a freshman, like what, how you kind of put in the words, what he's able to do compared to what other guys have kind of seen, younger guys have seen, and what, what can fans expect from him this season? Yeah, as far as he goes, like I've seen a lot of people throughout my time at the baseball field, and he's one of the best, you know, raw pure hitter, talent, guys, he can run, he can hit, he can throw, he can play defense, he can do a lot of things. So, um, and he knows that too. So he's going to have to, um, it's going to be an adjustment for him, just like any other freshman would be in the SEC. Um, so coach has done a great job of kind of holding him along. And then he's done a great job of um, putting his head down and working. So he's not thinking he's above anyone else or anything like that. I understand that you and Austin Boast are roommates, right? We are not, not roommates, but just close friends. we are close friends. I always so, go over to his house. So what is that relationship like, and what did it mean to you to see him get that honor, and how has his leadership style kind of come even more forward since uh, receiving the number 12? Yeah, it's been great to see him receive that. Um, you know, he's taken that with open arms and kind of ran with it. Um, he's a great person to get that number, um, and he embodies everything that it should be, really. Um, he comes into the field every day does his work, doesn't let any outside noise get to him with being the number 12. There's a lot of 
publicity that goes on with it, but he doesn't let that any of that distract him from the work that he needs to put in. Um, and on top of that, he's a great baseball player. Um, he hit. He was probably one of the best hitters in the country last year, and I think he's going to be one of the best hitters in the country this year too. Um, so that um, definitely plays a big role in that. And then, as far as you know, the person he is, he is a great man. Like he's a great friend. So you know, I I went over to his house the other day. He, he didn't even know I was coming. Uh, he was in the shower. I just sat down on his couch, and we were just like, he came out of the shower. He's like, oh hey, and then we just started chatting and playing some video games so it's it's been a good uh relationship with me and him and then um a lot of the other guys on the team as well who's been the dirtiest pitch so far in uh in spring practice Oof. that's a good question uh i'll have to go with hmm. chris cortez can throw a nasty change up sometimes it's it's pretty dirty yeah he's he's got a lot of good stuff coming out of that arm Sweet, thank you guys.